sales is improving, but now the business want to know how they should plan for the future. The manufacturing head wants to know how many how many cars would be they be able to produce in the next year, and the sales guy want to know how much cars they would be able to sell in next three years. This is where data science come into picture. So all these modern BI tools uh, today can uh, integrate uh, very seamlessly with tools like R, Python, and multiple other machine learning uh, tools and technology, and uh, using a uh, uh, combination of business intelligence tools and artificial intelligence tools, uh, companies like us can uh, able to tell the business that uh, this would be your sale for the next three years and this would be your manufacturing for the next three years. We use multiple models like time series model, Larima model, which help us to reach that kind of facts and figures. So uh, we have got the data now, we have got analytics and we also have got understanding of data science about the forecasting mechanism. Uh, now we need to uh, get the hold of the cloud. The first question that I ask my uh, CIO when I go to meet them is what is their cloud strategy? Do they want to work in cloud or they, do they want to work on prem only? The most of the customer today now are moving to cloud and there are still a couple of customers like banking, uh, businesses or finance industries, we still want to keep data on prem due to multiple security concerns, which they still have in their mind. But a lot of data is coming from the cloud. That is why basically companies should have those cloud strategies. A lot of businesses are still having the hybrid model. They keep a lot of uh, finance companies keep their finance data on prem and they, they are happy to move the other data on the cloud. So this is another important uh, part of the overall data analytics landscape. So uh, let's talk about a data challenge here. Let us take example again, example of an auto company which is manufacturing uh, cars in India. So they have got multiple departments like any other company. Uh, their HR is using a database known as SQL Server. Their marketing is using a CRM platform known as Salesforce. They are using MS Dynamics. They have got a dealer management system. Now the CEO of the company want to see the single source of truth. He want to see the gross margin. He want to see the net margin. He want to see the sales across multiple states in India, where his cars are being selling, where his cars are not being selling, and uh, how is manufacturing doing. So uh, now the data is sitting in multiple data sources, and uh, he need to get a single source of truth. So we need to have connection between all those data sources. We need to identify the pattern between those data sources and. Uh, most of the data remains in silos in industry. So this is one of the problem that most businesses or most CIOs that discuss with us when we go and meet them. If we see the uh, a couple of results from surveys and the, one of the reasons that has come out is uh, uh, awareness, the data awareness is not there uh, completely in the organization. What it means, companies are spending millions of dollars to implement these uh, modern data analytics or BI tools but uh, the awareness uh, in their business teams, the sales manager, the marketing manager, the finance managers, the PMO team is still uh, still on a lower side. And at times this becomes a, a, a great challenge to, to, to have the complete successful project when implementation of these tools is done. If you can see this diagram, so if we can see on the left hand side, multiple data sources which are entering in the funnel, and the right hand side dashboard is something uh, which uh, every uh, CXO leader wants. They want to see the health of the organization on a single dashboard. They want to take data driven decisions uh, based on the health of the organization. And uh, so, the, so uh, the velocity uh, at which the data is being generated and the variety of data, it could be, it could be uh, to, uh, tweets uh, which are coming on the social media account, it, the data could be coming in mail, that it could be a transactional data. And getting uh, information and analytics out of data is a is, is challenge that basically is at the utmost priority of all the senior leadership. Uh, so now uh, let us define what uh, data analytics is. Uh, so it is a process of uncovering trends, patterns, and correlations in large amount of raw data to help make data informed decision. This is how basically we define data analytics. And uh, business intelligence or BI tools uh, are the tools that uh, help analyze data. Uh, these tools are also known as visualization tools. 
uh, what these tools does, these tools uh, uh, first import data from multiple data sources. If I've got multiple data source system, these tools would be able to gather data. The data is imported in these tools. Then uh, we do data modeling, data cleansing, and in the end we do visualization where basically the, the charts relevant to those data is created so that people at the managerial level can be able could be able to understand the analytics behind the data. If we uh, see today, uh, there are uh, four major tools which are available in the market, which are uh, uh, also part of the Gartner Magic Quadrant. These tools are Microsoft, Power BI. Uh, there's a tool from Click, ClickSense and ClickView. ClickSense is the latest version which is available in the market right now. Then we have a tool from uh, Tableau, which is now a Salesforce company. And then we have got ThoughtSpot. So these are the four majorly and most popular tools available in the market and used by multiple large enterprises for generating visualization and dashboards. Uh, this is a Gartner magic quadrant. So if you can see the leaders quadrant, we can see three players out there. Microsoft is on the top. Then we have got a tool from a Salesforce tablet and then we have got click. And if we see the the X axis, it is the completeness of vision and if we can see the Y axis ability to execute and we can see that Microsoft is on the top and there is a huge difference between uh, the other two competitors which are there in the same quadrant. So in this uh, webinar, we will discuss uh, some features of how Microsoft Power BI works. So this is a snapshot from uh, Power BI. So once this tool is implemented, you can simply ask questions about your data. You ask the question and it will give you a visualization based result. Simply if you can see, the question is electricity from coal, nuclear gas per year in US. And if as soon as you fire the question, you will get a a, a beautiful chart as a as a output in the visualization, and uh, this tool also has the capability of uh, without even you doing anything, you simply click on generate insights. It will go into your uh, go deep into your data, and it will dig out the insights from the data automatically. It can quickly show you uh, if there is a correlation between multiple tables. Uh, which uh, value is going up, which value is going down, and is there any outliers in your data? All these work is done automatically by these tools. And uh, now all these modern tools also have got a mobile interface. If you're traveling, if you're on the go, you can simply use the mobile application, which is very, very handy to see the, to see the analytics, which is uh, of the same uh, uh, data, which is also seen in the web view. Now, uh, how are this uh, analytics can have the PMs? So uh, let us take an example of a large uh, portfolio that a PM is managing. There, is, there are multiple sprint running uh, in multiple countries and a large team is working on the, on the entire portfolio. And uh, now the portfolio manager want to see uh, how the sprints are running, are the sprints are uh, running on time, are they getting delayed, uh, how is the budget allocation uh, is done between multiple sprints, or uh, what is the defect rate? Are we good on the estimate side? Multiple other project planning and project monitoring parameters. These tools can directly connect to Jira also. You can have a connector and then Power BI can directly connect with Jira and all the Jira data can be imported in Power BI. And uh, the entire analytics is available to PM on a click of a mouse of a button. Uh, you can uh, spot early symptoms of slippages. These tools have got the capability to see those uh, insights when you import your data. Uh, you can capture the velocity of work, which is basically how many user stories you are burning per sprint. You can analyze the project risk. Everything that we do manually using Excel tools or the dashboard that are in Jira can be directly uh, imported into Power BI. And these Power BI dashboards are live dashboards. If we use a version known as Power BI desktop, which is free of cost, we can refresh the data around eight times in a day. If we use uh, the other paid versions of Power BI, the refresh frequency could be made higher. So it could be basically a near live dashboard if whenever something changed in the backend in any database or any CRM tool, the same thing would be visible on the dashboard. And uh, these dashboards could be shared across the PMO team, including the customer stakeholder, the leadership team, and everybody is on the same page and the single source of truth is being visible to everybody. This is how it helps uh, 
project managers. And today what is happening? A lot of uh, projects that are being done by PMs across the globe also include data analytics. So a PM might be handling a project that uh, uh, involves uh, implementation of Power BI or Click or Tabby or a ThoughtSpot. If PM is aware of how these tools work, again, basically, he would be able to do a good job. Uh, secondly, a uh, lot of people in uh, sales, finance, supply chain use these tools to do data analytics. Again, if the project involves working with these departments, then again, uh, the knowledge of these tools will be very, very handy for the PMs. And in my experience, I've spent around 10 years as a project manager. And today, if I uh, reflect back on my experience, if I would have known of these tools when I was doing project management, then again, I think, I think the the uh, it would be more effective at uh, uh, considering the, the knowledge of these tools. And I, I basically would be able to take a, a much uh, 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 quantitative uh, decisions uh, as we as we basically we are doing uh, today. Couple of other uh, use cases of these BI tools apart from project management. Uh, all these tools are used in operation for doing uh, demand forecasting, inventory optimization. Then marketing department used these tools to do customer insight, churn analytics. So uh, uh, we did a project for an insurance company in Japan where the idea was how many people would come back to buy insurance from that uh, agency. And uh, most of the people uh, who implement these BI tools are guys from uh, finance and sales department because these are the department which is uh, highly, uh, highly heavy on data. And then uh, service uh, uh, supports and the sales support are also department that uses these BI uh, tools to analyze their data. So if we see the customer momentum, uh, this is a slide from Microsoft Power BI back. These are the customers who are using Power BI. You can see customers from consumer goods. You can see customers from discrete manufacturing, healthcare, professional services. And if you do a survey on LinkedIn, so Power BI is among the top three skill people learned in 2022. And data analyst is uh, the top three skill on which people got hired in 2022. So data analytics is uh, really, really uh, very, very hot as of now, um, both on the side of skill and implementation. Uh, as a PM, we know uh, how agile works, how waterfall works. So uh, BI lifecycle is also similar. So the process involves is get the data from multiple data sources, prepare the data, you need to clean the data, you need to clean the outliers, and you need to find the insight. Uh, visualize the findings and then present the findings and you can distribute the information across multiple teams in your organization. So uh, which are the data sources uh, where Power BI can get connected? So let me see if I can show you live in the tool. So this is a Power BI desktop. Uh, Power BI desktop is free of cost. Anybody can download this tool and uh, start using it. Unless and until you want to publish this the dashboard to the outside world, it will remain free and you can use this thing. If I click on get data, it will take a while to come up. So you can see uh, Power BI can import data from Excel, XML, folders, PDF, and you name the database and it will be here, whether it is SQL, Oracle, IBM. It can connect to almost anything and then uh, Anything on cloud, it can connect to being a Microsoft native. It can uh, connect to any of the Azure services and uh, online services, Dynamics, Salesforce, Google Analytics. And then uh, if you want to connect it directly to a Python script or an R script, it can also connect there. So Power BI can connect to more than 100 data sources where data is stored. It can uh, pull data from almost all the data sources that are currently seen. This is another uh, sample application which is uh, being done in Power BI desktop. So what happens, uh, you import the data. This is a snapshot of multiple tables on the right hand side which have been imported in the tool. And then you do a uh, data modeling. You connect the data using the primary key, the field which are common among these tables. And then you do visualization. You can see multiple filters and visualization on the left hand side. Using these multiple charts, I can plot these charts. So this remains on my desktop. 
and when I publish it, I publish it to a Power BI service, which is a software as a service running on cloud. If I want to see the same dashboard on cloud, so you can see it now. It is running on PowerBI.com. I'm just making it full screen. So this is a sales uh, team scorecard. If I want to see how Andrew is doing, I have got 83 customers and seven products. I just simply select Andrew and I can see that Andrew is working with 49 customers and five products and he's earning a gross margin of 44%. Similarly, if I want to see how Tina is doing, I can again see how Tina is doing. She's working with 11 customers and three products. Now I simply want to see how my North region is doing. I will simply click on North. I can see there are 12 customers and five products with a gross margin of 42.9%. This is how basically we can analyze this dashboard. Now this is another snapshot where I'm doing an industry margin analysis. I can simply uh, check how my CPG uh, is doing. So it will show you that CPG has got nine customers and two products. I simply want to see how my retail business is doing. I will click on retail and the whole dashboard will change to retail. Now it shows me there is only one customer and basically which is giving you a gross margin of 59%. This is what is happening in your retail business. And you can simply replace the filter. Uh, now I want to see what are the insights from this data. I will simply click on get insight and it will give you some insight. The tool will run some artificial intelligence algorithms and it will tell you that your overall number of customers is 80. But industry uh, under services, the customers are higher than others. It can tell you that you have got five products, but other segments uh, apart from this are higher. Your gross margin analysis, all this analysis the tool is doing by itself. This is basically how it works. This is known as Power BI service, which runs on cloud. And uh, uh, as I told you, these uh, Power BI can directly connect with Jira. A couple of dashboards that uh, we designed, uh, keeping in mind the project man managers who are part of this call. So this is one sample dashboard, which is designed uh, for project managers. You can see multiple KPIs cost reduction, process improvement, uh, you can see overall completion of the project, what are WIP components, and then you can also have a table which is, has got uh, multiple projects started and ended. So this uh, is similar to uh, what you see in Jira, but now Jira is directly connected to Power BI. Uh, the slice and dice opportunities uh, which are available in Power BI is much better than what, what are there in Jira. You can do multiple slice and dice, you can have multiple filters, you can publish the report to multiple stakeholders at a click of a mouse button. And then a couple of other dashboards, this is a sprint management dashboard. Uh, you can see sprint velocity, how many changes are coming, and how many story points are there. Again, basically it's a slice and dice as I just showed you. Uh, another the sample dashboard where we are doing team management, how many resources are there in the team, what is their availability, how is the team distributed, then plan versus actual and uh, status uh, update, total utilization, all the metrics that as a PM we, uh, we check day in and day out to ensure that uh, the project is within the effort and schedule. Uh, this is basically how we uh, monitor the sale. Uh, if I'm the sales head of the company, I want to see my gross margin, my this year versus last year sales, sales versus budget, and then subgrouping. Uh, so these tools can go to multiple, we can create a hierarchy in these tools and they can go to multiple levels. Uh, and it's quite simple to create these charts. It's a small uh, uh, GIF which is running right now. You simply do a drag and drop. You can replace columns by rows and you can see the output as quick. So I have got uh, uh, one of my uh, architect in the call today and I will request Arnab if he can quickly uh, show how to create a dashboard uh, in Power BI, uh, taking a couple of uh, Excel files. Arnab, if you can show right now. Yeah, sure. So uh, 
So uh, we will go through the entire process of uh, importing data into Power BI and then uh, building some logic around it and uh, creating a very basic dashboard. So I'll be sharing my screen. Please do let me know if you can uh, see it. Uh, actually, I do not see my option to share now. OK, I got it. Yes, or not by way and made you a presenter. Yes, Thanks. I see. So is my uh, screen visible? Do you see Power BI open? Yes. Yeah. Great. So uh, I had this uh, demo file with me. I already have a couple of uh, a few tables loaded. So let me go ahead and show you what the basic uh, you know features of Power BI is. So in the left hand side, we have three tabs. This is the report tab that the one we are on right now. This is called the canvas. This is where we build our visualization, our reports and everything. This is the data view. Over here, we can go ahead and look at our existing uh, data files that we have already imported. And this one over here is the modeling view. Over here, we can we see the tables and the relationships which they have with each other. Uh, let me go ahead and show you step by step how to import a single file. I'm going to import a CSV file. So I'm going to go to get data and click on text CSV. Uh, this is the option you choose to import flat files. So I'm going to choose the territories file over here and load it up. Now, when I select that file and open it, I'm given two options. Either I can directly load it into Power BI or I can click on transform data to do any kind of transformations, any kind of cleanup or any kind of data massaging that if I need to do that. I do not need to do any such thing for the purpose of this presentation, so I'm just going to go ahead and load it. Now Power BI is intelligent enough to create relationships on its own. If they find common columns and if they uh, follow certain criteria, however, in this territories table, you see there are no common uh, column names with the any other ones. So this sales 2020 is my fact table or my data table, and these are my dimension tables and territories is just another dimension table. I'm going to connect it to it. Uh, I see that I have the sales territory key over here and I have territory key, though the names doesn't match. So Power BI couldn't uh, create the relationship on their own. However, I can go ahead and create the relationship very simply by dragging and dropping the matching columns one on top of the other. And just like that, I have a relationship built. OK, if I open it up, you can see that this is connected with the territory key in the sales table with the sales territory key in the territories table. It is in a many to one relationship with a single direction cross filtering. OK. Uh, once this is done. I can go back to my uh, data view and check if I have everything that I need. Uh, for example, if I need to create any further calculations over here, uh, for example, the data that I had loaded had only columns till this one. The order line item, order quantity, order uh, the product cost and the product price. I, for the purpose of this presentation, I needed some other columns for example, uh, order cost and order value. So what I did was I created these columns using simple Excel like formulas. Like if I click on that, you will see the formula over here. So order cost is equal to. This is sales 2020 is the name of this table, so it is taking the order quantity column. 
which is this column from this table and multiplying it by the product cost, which is this column for every row. And putting in the value of the, res the result in this column. Similarly, this is the order cost. Similarly, I have also created order value. Which is another uh, calculated column, which is a multiplication of order quantity with the product price. OK, so now that I have my basic information uh, sorted out, what I can do is I can go ahead in the canvas and I can start building my visualizations. So first of all, uh, let me check my order costs versus order uh, value or order price. Okay, and let me look at it in a, um, across time. So in my calendar, I have my uh, calendar column, uh, sorry, calendar table. I have date, month, quarter, and year, and I have also created a hierarchy wherein the year, quarter, and month is there in a sequence. So I can go ahead and create a, a say, a clustered column chart. Okay. And let me bring in this year hierarchy in the X axis. And then from the sales table, let me bring in the order cost and order value. Now, since these are columns, these are not single measures or these are not single uh, scalar values. These are columns. So whenever I drag and drop a column in a, a value field, it automatically does some kind of a aggregation. Like, for example, you can see over here that it says sum of order cost and sum of order value. If I right click on it, it shows that what you know kind of aggregation was automatically applied. If I want, I can change it as well. Instead of sum, I can go with average, av minimum, maximum, distinct count, or just count, uh, standard deviation, variance, median, and so on and so forth. Okay. I can also rename them just by double clicking on it. So if I don't want to keep the sum of part of it, I can remove it. Okay. And this is my first visual. Now, see over here that since I have the hierarchy, I have the option to look at it. Uh, once I publish this uh, dashboard, the user will have the option to look at it in the different levels of the hierarchy. For example, right now it is only showing for 2020. If I have multi-year data, it will show me year-wise data. However, if I expand down by one level, now it shows year and then quarter wise. And if I expand down even one more level, now it shows year wise, quarter wise, and then month wise. OK, so whatever these options that I'm doing right now, these options that you see over here, these options would be available to the user. The user can go ahead and do these kind of drill downs on their own. Now, similarly, uh, you will see that uh, I am the dimension that I'm using over here is time. And the measures that I have used over here are order cost and order value. This order cost and order value is coming from the sales table, whereas the time dimension is coming from the calendar table. How are these calendar uh, these tables related? It are related using these relationships. Okay, so you cannot use multi you know, uh, fields from multiple tables unless in a single visual unless they are connected using these kind of uh, relationships. 
OK, so now let's go ahead and build a geographical visualization. So for example, I want to see total sales, which is the order value by country. So I click on this map visual. Let me bring it over here. OK, and the location I have in the territories table which I had just imported. So let me put uh, drag this country and put it in the location tape uh, tab. And then you see the it is showing me the location of uh, every you know wherever there was sales. However, I also want to know how much of sales happened in these places. So uh, let me put in order value as the size of the bubble. So now by looking at the size of the bubble. You can see that this is Australia and North America. Oh, sorry, Australia and USA had the maximum sales. Canada had uh, comparatively the lowest sales. And in the somewhere in the middle, you have the sales for the European countries, uh, UK. France and Germany. OK. Also, if you want, I can. Put in the continent in the legend so that they will be color coded differently. So Pacific would be in uh, red or orange. North America would be that is Canada and USA would be in dark blue and Europe would be in light blue. If I want, I can change them as well. Like for I can keep North America like this and Europe. I can change. Uh, so Europe I can change to say. Yellow. So you do have formatting options like this. I hope this is clear. Now, if you mouse over, you will get to see the values for everyone. Now, in case you want to see some extra values which is not there, which is not part of this visual, you can put that in the tooltips. So I have order value over here. However, I want also want to check order quantity. So let me put in order quantity over here. And now whenever I do a mouse over. It shows the country, the continent, the order value and the order quantity, all four of them. Now let me build a couple more visuals. Let's say I want to see category wise and subcategory wise. Uh, order quantity. Or order value. Any one of them, so uh, let me for category wise, let me pull up the donut chart. OK. Just resizing it a bit. And then over here. I can go to my products table and bring in category. In the legend. And then. Order value or say order quantity in the values field. So based on. Number of orders. You can see accessories is the maximum. Bike sales is the second highest and clothing is the third highest. Now out of this, if I want, I can also check something like uh, what are my um, subcategory wise sales. So let me bring in another visual called a tree map. So. 
the stream map over here. I can bring in subcategory over here and order value as the values. Or say I can bring in order quantity, whatever I choose. Okay. So order quantity by subcategory and order quantity by category. Okay, this gives me. Uh, there is also something called cross filtering, which I will show you uh, in a bit. I can also put in slicers over here, which will help me to slice and dice this data. For example, I can put in a slicer over here and set this slicer to show the time dimension. So let me just put in date over here. So using this, I can oh, select uh, sorry, uh, the time Anna, period. Uh, Anna, we have got 10 more minutes, so I think I think that this has given a good glimpse of the features of Power BI. Uh, I think I think this should be good for now because we have got 10 minutes. If people have got some Q&A, we can take that as of now. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anna. I'll yeah, stop so sharing. Yeah. Screen. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you, Arnav, and thank you, um, Ripple. Let's go before we go to QA. Uh, let's go to a um, little uh, uh, quiz here. So we have been uh, talking about. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Yes. OK, very good. So let's have a little uh, fun stuff here. You have been listening to this presentation for uh, quite some time. So um, uh, join this uh, quiz. Uh, you you will. Uh, uh, and uh, and also um, will uh, you have some the winner will get uh, a prize. You know, and these are the prize options for the for the winner. OK, so you have a lot of things and uh, you actually have Ripple has offered this data analytics self paced learning course and there are different modules in uh, to that. If you uh, if you want to do that or if you want to do regular project management, I have so many things here. So uh, OK, so let's get started. I, I know there are 30 plus people in this call. Um, so if you want to uh, join the quiz, uh, Please join it. I'll give you another uh, 20 seconds uh, to join the quiz. Uh, you have a chance to, uh, you know, uh, do some knowledge test, what we saw here, and also uh, get an, has an opportunity to win the some of the uh, one of the prize here. Okay, all right. So let's get started here. Uh, so you have to answer fast to get more points. All right, all of you got it right. Excellent. OK, so let's see how fast. Who did the fastest one here? OK. ISI, easy. OK, all right. All right, let's move on. Uh, the second question is coming up here. Uh, very, very soon. OK, most of you got it right. Um, let's move on and see the leaders board. Uh, OK, I see some disruptions happening here. OK, yeah, OK, there, there, there's a quite a bit of disruption here. OK, let's move on to there are five questions. OK, so uh, and we'll get it done in very quickly here.
Okay, most of you are right. Um, so let's see the speed part. Wow, okay, there are changes here. Uh, this is exciting. Okay, very good, very good. The race is on. Yeah, okay, most of you are right. Wow, okay, there's going to be change again. This is interesting. Okay, Martin is still leading. So this is the last question if somebody is going to beat Martin. Philip, if you can put my email address in the chat, the winner should email to me and we can arrange this uh, price for them, for them. Okay, most of you are right. It's a spread over pretty widely. So let's see who is the, oh wow. <laughs> wow, look at you. <laughs> Very good, so uh, Chi is the winner. Uh, please uh, send your uh, email address to me and I will send your, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, your reward. Uh, so how did you like this session? Uh, so um, I want to see from you how, the, uh, how, how um, well, what is your impression about this session? Very good. Very good. I'm glad that uh, many of you liked it. Uh, that's uh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, okay, the last one here is uh, what are the different topics that you want to um, you know uh, want to want us to present for these webinars? So if you want to hear about a particular topic and if you are interested in uh, those topics, please. Um, uh, Power Automate, okay, uh, okay, Sprint Reviews, we'll be doing that one. More Power BI, okay, all right, we have it for you, man. Okay, all right, let's uh, let's keep going here. Uh, so in conclusion, and if, if you can talk about this in 30 seconds, Ripple, uh, I can then move to the next slide and we have Q&A. Yeah. Uh... Thank you, NK. So as a conclusion, basically, I would say like uh, today, the this is the era of quantitative project management, project management by numbers, by data, by facts, and uh, it's becomes imperative for the PM community to learn these tools, to upskill in these tools. And uh, whether you work on uh, project with data analytics, whether you basically you work with departments, multiple departments, these tools are going to help you. And I think uh, there is a lot of uh, Future in these tools, and I would recommend people to upskill uh, uh, from all uh, people who work in PM community. Thanks, Anke. All right. Okay. Uh, so you wanted more BI. So we have uh, we have scheduled a one day class on Power BI in a day, and uh, uh, Arna Vipul, somebody will be uh, leading this class. So if you want, if you are interested, sign up for this. We have one of this in every month and we also have another another training which is a very deep dive four day class if you want to really become a, a kind of developer on power bi but if you are a project manager program manager portfolio manager or somebody who is a user of um, the data not the person doing the real programming then this will be something a very deep dive for you um, one day class and you will learn much more and uh, but Arnav and uh, Vipul can show you what you can do uh, with your project data, whether you use Jira, whether you use any other tool uh, to track your project information. Uh, you will be able to create dashboards and analyze the data, and that will help you to become very, very pro uh, proactive. Okay, so I will, uh, I will stop here and see if there are any questions. Uh, that we pull and I can answer you. We have uh, three, four minutes left. 
we can stay as long as is needed uh, so philip if you are there any question on the uh, on the on the chat if not that's okay you can ask the question or put the questions in in the chat i haven't seen any questions come through in the chat box but uh, yes if you do have any please feel free to use uh, the chat box for your questions or you can just ask that that yeah. is also all right you can uh, uh, you can just ask Anyone has any questions? That seems like we did a wonderful job. Okay, the question, uh, and uh, as uh, we move forward, um, here is the how do you earn a PDU? Um, and uh, then we have uh, this is the Power BI class that I was talking about. Four day deep dive other than the one day classes. And then you have a uh, lot of other project management classes. Our next PMP exam prep is coming up from 4th February. Uh, if you or somebody, um, somebody you know looking for that class, uh, or any other training, um, you have opportunity to ask question to me and we will we are here for another couple of minutes. I think that yeah, this this is our uh, contact information if you want to uh, get in touch with us. Any questions, any any a, any opportunities you see using uh, data analytics tools like Power BI in your environment? Uh, if you are an environment and uh, you are uh, wondering how can you use it, uh, maybe Vipul can provide you uh, more insights. I see a question from Tommy. Is data from P6 able to be imported into Power BI? OK, uh, let uh, Vipul respond to that. So uh, uh, maybe if uh, P6 has got any uh, ODBC connection, then I think it could work. And uh, uh, connecting with Jira might be interesting to show. So yes, basically we can we can show connection with Jira sometime in the next talk. So basically Power BI has got more than 100 connectors. If, if, if there is a connector which supports ODBC or OLEDB, then uh, we can connect to anything. Uh, if P6 has got uh, ODBC or OLEDB connectivity, then we can directly connect from it. Uh, I, I think it is P6 is Primavera 6. Is that right? Or P6 is something else is that for the construction management? I am assuming uh, Primavera only. Yeah, that's what uh, Tommy. If you can confirm that. Uh, oh yeah. And I, I, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's, Prim Primavera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's a pretty sophisticated tool, and I'm sure that will have some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of a uh, uh, interface. Uh, I'm I'm very sure. So if you want to get in touch with us later on, we can we can explore that. Um, can Power BI connect to ClickUp? I don't know what is ClickUp. Uh, Vipul, do you know ClickUp? No, I know ClickSense and ClickView. I don't know ClickUp. So, well, uh, who is the vendor for this tool? Um, ClickUp, and what kind of tool it is? Okay, all right. If it if this tool oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Can, yeah, yeah. Uh, ClickUp is like uh, Jira. It's another. Okay. From project management. Sure, absolutely. I think if the tool, if you can export data from that tool, and if there are connectors provided, um, then it can uh, we can just take it, import it to Power BI, and you can upload yeah. data any number of times in a day. Um, and uh, there could be a possibility to upload uh, and transform uh, in a almost real time too. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of possibilities here. There are a lot of possibilities uh, here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that can be done. Yeah, so 
think about what tools you use. I know I do agile coaching and uh, there are a lot of uh, teams and organization that use Jira and uh, Jira doesn't have good reporting. So uh, I know that there, there are uh, companies that use Tableau, uh, the other tool that uh, Vipul was mentioning. Uh, they use Tableau, they use all maybe in some cases, actually, in one of the companies I worked, I have to pull data into into Excel and use Excel uh, macros to do that. At that time, I was not aware of Power BI. So I would have used Power BI at that time. Uh, OK, all right. Any any other questions? Uh, I see something popped up here. Oh, that is, uh, is partial third party connectors. Yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, that's what Arnav is talking about. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, thank you very much. You have our um, uh, our in, uh, information over here. You can write to me. You can write to Vipul, and uh, we will be more than happy to answer your questions. And uh, if you want to uh, to see explore your situation a little bit more, um, then we can do that. And uh, feel free to join that one day class that I mentioned to you. All right. Thank you. Have a have a nice rest of your day. Bye bye. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, your time. Thank you.